Nore a de kala ana hebe ka kusi be mo nwanu la o le vute awam o le vute awam le bo mo nwanu so mu lo nwam bia woro che ye ma aho tolu na yes ebere mugu so onye ebere mugu aho ezugbote aga di nwanu ka chasere nka aya porom je ebe na mo che ya be mugu a obura gbagide mbagide 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 even noro ihem noro la be eba nbe na mo cha he burugo a 8 days ya o abala asato abala asato ha isago la pe izu izu lato ihem noro mlo ta ze eba mo bi amalite school la 1959 mu je cha je cha school for ta ze aluodi mo bi atuti turime so gbe mo chore mo nwa obada obara buruzo gbawa mo o ga wuzi ngbe mmecha mmocha woro nwa ya duo ihe de ka abala ebu mu were mini la asacha ha bi achoputazia la ngba ahu ebere mu ugu ahu la obara sioti a mechite mechite ehun nwa o ku izugi Yes, but I saw him. 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 I saw According to the World Health Organization, WHO, FGM is any partial or total removal of the external female genitalia or any other injury to the female genital organs for non-medical reasons. WHO classified FGM into four types. Type 1 is called clitoridectomy. This is the partial or total removal of the clitoris. In very rare cases, only the prepuce, the fold of the skin surrounding the clitoris, is removed. Type 2. This is the partial or total removal of the clitoris and the labia minora, with or without excision of the labia majora. Note, the labia are the lips surrounding the vagina. Type 3 is called infibulation. This is the most severe form. Besides removing the clitoris, part of the labia minora and majora, which is the inner and outer lip of the female genitalia, is caught or repositioned. The vagina opening or edges is sutured and a little orifice is left for the passage of urine and menstrual blood. Women who had infibulation carried out on them would have to be deinfibulated or cut open again in the future before pregnancy can be possible. Type 4 is called unclassified. It differs from one culture to the other. In some cultures, it involves stretching the labia minor, that is the inner lip. In other cultures, it may involve pricking, passing, incising the clitoris and labia, stretching the clitoris and or even the labia, burning the clitoris and surrounding tissues, scraping off the tissue surrounding the opening of the vagina, using hot water to numb the clitoris or massage. But it's time. And the may where they can go on them. No one knows to hear their name, Bembo. Or to talk about the modern name where you were. Yeah, and they may, they call where you boy, yeah, get your young one yaka. Manu boa, where me pay lana. Take a gama cause you were better. Nambo one ele. I'm not running here, we hear rar in your jaw. In Africa, over 3 million girls are estimated to be at risk of FGM annually. In Nigeria, according to the National Demographic Health Survey NDHS, 2013 report, states with the highest prevalence include Oshun with 76.6%, Eboi with 74.2%, Ekiti having 72.3%, Imo 
with 68% and Oyo having 65.6%. FGM is carried out on young girls between infancy and age 15 and occasionally on adult women. 27% of women between the ages of 15 to 49 have been cut. 82% of women in Nigeria undergo FGM before the age of 5. The prevalence of girls and women who have undergone FGM in Nigeria is 25%. It's the third highest absolute number of women and girls who have undergone FGM worldwide after Egypt and Ethiopia. 19.9 million Nigerian women have undergone FGM. More women having undergone FGM in the southern zones than in the northern zones. And surprisingly, 32% of urban women have undergone FGM as compared with 19% rural women. Oh. I'm a victim. I was circumcised. Hmm? But honestly, my two girls, I didn't circumcise them. Hmm? And they're all married, happily married. Some immediate effects of FGM include severe pain, serious bleeding or hemorrhage, infection on the wound or vaginal infection, trauma, problems urinating, urinary tract infection, tetanus and other infectious diseases such as HIV from unsterilized cutting tools and lastly death. Other long-term effects include severe pain during sexual intercourse, depression and anxiety, painful and prolonged menstrual periods, prolonged labor and other complications during delivery, urinary problems, vesicle vaginal fistula, VVF, or rectal vaginal fistula, RVF. I became more worried when I looked at 412 VVF patients that we had operated here. We just looked at a cohort of 412 patients and discovered that about 90% of those VVF patients had suffered one form of female genital mutilation. <laughs> The summary, you know, based on my experience, is that it is done one to control women's sexuality, two to also control reproduction. But if you ask the average person in the community, they will tell you that they're doing it because it's their culture and they want to preserve it. The second reason that will come is because if you don't do it, the woman will become promiscuous. The origin of FGM is unknown and it predates Christianity or Islam. Nowhere in the Bible did, they, they, did it include women in the circumcision and it never happened. Oh, okay. In the Bible, God is not the Bible. The good news is that social norms do change. When circumstances surrounding them change, just like the killing of twins that was stopped decades ago, young advocates are now standing against FGM in Nigeria. Stakeholders are stepping up their efforts to end FGMC in this generation. Some of them will even do it without their husbands knowing. We realize that the men sometimes do not know what these women do for their children. And this innocent child will not believe that your mother can hurt you. So the men are cut off from the practice. The women believe they are doing it for the men. And the practice continues. So when we, normally when we bring the men and women together, the men are shocked that the practice is going on. And the women are also shocked that the men are not even in support of it. <laughs> so it's important for dialogue so that both parties will hear from each other and reach a consensus that is not in our best interest. <laughs> Ma, ma de adecha, ma ma adecha deti.
Maybe because then in 2015, Nigeria passed into law the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, you know, which clearly prohibits the practice of female genital mutilation. But you know that is a federal law that has to be domesticated at the state level for it to be enforced. But that is not to say that there are, that there are no states with laws prohibiting the practice of FGM. Where we have states that have put in place laws prohibiting the practice, implementation of that law is still a problem. There is general lack of awareness, one, on the law itself, and then the provisions of the law. All those beliefs about is giving birth easily and uh, stopping promiscuity are false reasons that were given to them for them to support this practice. The moment the women stand behind this campaign, nothing. Nothing will stop us from succeeding. We will go to the village to talk much on this. In my own locality, it is just about 10%. In my locality, about 10%. We say they have almost stopped circumcising their female child. Because there's no gain in it. And before now, it's a practice that people just don't talk about because it involves the part of an anatomy that people are not comfortable talking about, the female genital parts. So, but with constant dialogue with community members, with constant dialogue with healthcare providers, with constant dialogue with traditional and community leaders, people are now becoming aware that indeed this practice that they thought was um, positive for the protection of the girl child is actually harmful and now they are beginning to have a rethink. We have communities that, that, that have declared total abandonment of the practice, you know. So I think this is a remarkable achievement in the three years of um, implementing the program at the moment. But we're not there yet, it's still work in progress. It takes the consistent and committed effort of everyone to insist that education is more important and not mutilation. We must not rest until female genital mutilation and cotton becomes a thing of the past, never to be revisited again. Together, we can and will end female genital mutilation and cotton in this generation.